If I bruise the bud so the specters inside show themselves, you could shoot them. Once freed, the ivy should quickly wither. We can get to that ivy from the other side. The wards have weakened. Ceridian's power wanes. We shouldn't leave without talking to the witch. Nobody's home. You can feel it. Who there? Where could they be? Crows. They flock to that great tree up there. If I bruise the bud so the spectres inside show themselves, you could shoot them. Once freed, the ivy should quickly wither.
quick and precise. Well done. That's almost it. The Banishers are here. Already? How unfortunate. You called us. Did I? I thought I had more time. In the end, it runs out for all of us. As I depart this old carcass, I leave no burning heart behind. Go or stay. To prevail, you must first set your heart at peace. When at last you face the nightmare, you must both be clear on what you want. You must... What do you mean? It is not for me to give you answers, only to prepare you for what awaits. Then we can all go to sleep. Seeker doesn't hate you, Rory. She's just not used to being trusted. Protect her for me. Yeah. 
You're too late, old moss head, as ever. Soldiers attack! Yeah. <laughs> 
Look to me. Old Mossad is no more. He'll never drink from your skull now, will he? Another ancient promise broken. But what about me? How do I live now? You're all I ever had, and all I'll ever have. <laughs> Can I set the world on fire now? I just want to see it burn. A pity. Farewell, then. Ha <laughs> ha 
she took me in when my father, when no one else wanted me. She taught me to stand up straight. Leave her be, for now. Hmm. Roots won't remain visible for long after I take the heart. Be quick.
ever mention how good we are together? Yeah. It's always good to hear. She'll try to make sense of her pain. Or perhaps she'll sit with it a while. Mm. Or she'll try to kill it. Grief knows no rule book. When I returned from the war, I walked the wet streets of London for a long time. All I could feel was my heart digging a hole deep inside my chest. After what I had seen, what I had done. I just wanted the pain to stop. I wanted oblivion. You were at your lowest. We all lived through our own rock bottoms. You pulled yourself through. I drowned myself in ale. You're the one who pulled me out. Poetic, if melancholic. What's going on, Red? I feel lost. I can't even stand myself. I can barely stand to look at you. Something eats me from within, and it's growing. I don't know what's happening. I'm scared. I scare me too. I am untethered from the world, but through you, I still feel like myself. I cling to this. The closer we get to my return, the further from life I feel. I care nothing for the living. I only care for what I can take from them. Do you feel that way about me too? No, of course not. What are we doing? We're reclaiming our world. The only way we can. Are you sure this is what you want? We made an agreement. Are you having second thoughts? I don't know. Maybe. Ceridian's death has changed things for you. Yeah. She had power. Purpose. She had love and she still chose to leave. Maybe she's right. Should we reconsider? It may not be too late to change our minds. But you must promise me, Red, whatever we decide, we stick to it. We cannot change our minds again. I swear it, Mother. This is it. Backed by the Banishers, Helen Priest dethroned Captain Pennington. Dark truths were unearthed. Some secrets remained buried. The survivors must now set aside old sins and build themselves lives worth living. But can Helen Priest lead them into the future? 
chained as she is to her past. Spectral traces. Something's up with Helen.
Hunter's roster, and Theodore Shepard is overdue. A ghost damaged the sign. Ingersoll General Stores must live on. Someone's fighting for a cause. Or trying to solve a problem. Let's go inside and find out, eh? Theodore Shepard, and he's probably dead. Could the shop be here? Knock and find out. Closed. Are we in the right place? Try next door. Anyone home? No one. Papers in Miller's name. We're in the right place. Keep looking. He's organized. Disorganized traders lose money. Fonte reads English extensively. Well, nobody's perfect. What is this? A sansa. It's a musical instrument. It's Bantu. From Southern Africa. He's making protective amulets. He's making useless trinkets. And he works hard to keep it away. What is he afraid of? What don't we know? Let's search the store. Surprisingly high quality wares. Can't be many left in New Eden with the means to buy. He was doing surprisingly well for himself. Where did he get the inventory? Rebecca's will. She was rich. 
She left him a lot. That's where he got the inventory. No. The list matches his sales record. Touch my money and I'll drop you. What are you doing here? Thieving, no doubt. I'm no thief, Mr. Miller. I'm the Banisher. I brought Helen Priest back to the fort. A Banisher? Thieves lie. How do you know my name? It is my business to know. Red McCraith. If you are a Banisher of Ghosts, I have business for you. I'll pay. Aye. I know about Rebecca. It was she who sent me to find you. She worries for you. Says she loves you. The English have a word for that. Hogshite. What was she lying? You inherited her estate. Whichever. It matters not. You're a banisher. It is your job to get rid of her. Can you not just do your work? Easy, Mr. Miller. Now, I'll need to examine Rebecca's belongings. I sold them. All of them. You did? To who? I don't know. People. I wrote it down. In the register. Read it, if you wish. Two recent sales to the blacksmith and to Ingersoll's store. You've put quite the effort into protecting your home, haven't you? You poked about my house without my say-so. I know my business. So out of generosity, here's the truth. None of it works. Not the wreath, not the amulet. None of it works. Pretty, though. His brooch is working. It works. She hasn't come back. I can sleep now. I hear her calling, whispering my name. I wait to find her at my bedside. Her eyes meet. She stares. She won't leave me alone. She's an Akishi, a demon. Banish her. I'll pay you. I need a job. I accept. A storekeeper hears much. What do you hear, Mr. Miller? If you're looking for gossip about that grumpy old bastard Cotton Peabody, you won't get it from me. Friend of yours, is he? Cotton Peabody has no friends, which by rights might make him a friend of mine. But I don't like him either. What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? He was always good to me. He treated me like a man, like an equal. A man like that makes you want to follow him, makes you feel safe, makes you feel like the world is just, not like some, not like you. What think you of Helen Priest? Why do you care what I think? He's trying to get me into trouble. I'm saying nothing at all. Talk is silver, silence is gold. How are things in the fort, by your estimation? The captain is dead. I would say, in my estimation, putting one thing beside the other, that things are going badly. Still, some of us still live. And you're here. I don't know what that means for us. I suppose we shall find out. Farewell to you, Mr. Miller, sir. Farewell. And good hunting. He'd sold it all, everything she'd owned, and fast. Was he wiping the slate clean and moving on? If we track her things down, perhaps they'll tell us.
Oh, my good sir. Welcome. How can I help you? Good day to you. I see you've dropped your prices. Yes, Mr. McRae. Business is indeed lamentable. You have me at a disadvantage. Have we met? No. But I know you, of course I do. You're Mrs. Priest's trusted ally. Guilty as charged. Are you a Pennington man? Not at all, sir. Mrs. Priest has my complete support. Nathaniel Sather. So very glad to meet you at last. I'm in trouble, and I need a banisher. I heard you bought some things from Ferdinando Miller. Might I see them, do you think? Oh, the paintings. Yes, you must have a look. Beautiful pieces they are, and on sale at a very attractive price. If there's one thing a man like you needs out here on the mountain, it's paintings. You have, as my granny would say, the power to talk the back legs off a two-footed donkey. But I bet you listen, too. What do you hear here about? Oh, little of interest. Pennington has signed John Rumble to the train band, which means nothing at all to me. I believe John was down the flooded mine. That can't have been fun. Maybe the militia will be good for him. Huh? You never know who'll take to soldiering. You say that, and I defer to your experience, but I'm sure it's not for me. What do you think of Captain Pennington? He was a man of honour and a fine soldier, whatever that means. But he was too old. A pity he didn't know when to stop. Still, what happened to him? <laughs> I wish he hadn't. The boy has not a bad word to say about anyone. What do you think of Helen Priest, then? I'd put her in charge if I could. She's bright, trustworthy, thinks for herself. She's not married to all doctrine. People here are desperate. They're sick, they need courage. And Helen Priest fears nothing. More generally, how fares Fort Jericho? Our leader was removed from his position in the worst way possible. How do you think the fort fares? Badly. It fares badly. What seems to be the trouble? I'm sure this sounds silly. But I am an educated man, sir, and when I say this shop is haunted, I say it in all seriousness. We've had unexplained pilfering, though that has stopped since the widow Ingersoll ran away with the cash box. But I hear... noises. I'm alone here now, you see. After the horrors this fort endured, could one of these monstrosities be hiding away in the store? Right. That's uh, a lot. Let me ask a few questions. See if we can sort this out. Of course. Beg pardon. I must go. Thank you for your time. Take care, and mention it not. Pretty. The work, I mean. Not our ghost eye, though. Let's try the forge. Let's see. Ferdinando was a slave. She was his owner.
She kept that quiet, as if it were of no consequence. We know where to go, the barrack room. A ghost left a fragment of their path. I only recognize my name in the list. Distant family, but I can't disinherit them. I would never ask you that. To have met you is already more than I ever expected. If I was to lose you, God forbid, I'd cherish all that reminds me of you. There. <sighs> If you were to lose me, all that I own would now be yours. He claimed not to love her. Why lie? Maybe he did once, and now he doesn't. Let's see what he has to say about it. Punisher? Rebecca was in love with you. The feeling was not mutual. True? I was her pet. A dog nuzzling its master, hoping she might loosen its leash. She loved me, she said. I allowed her to think I loved her back. I sat up and begged and let her pet me. I was a very good boy. You gulled her, then took advantage. To a slave, a crumb of freedom tastes like a loaf. You'd have done no different. And I'd do the same again. When you faked your feelings for Mistress Argrave, you gained much more than freedom. Rebecca made you rich. As she lay dying, Rebecca Hargrave gave me my freedom. Before that, I was her slave. How very romantic. If it weren't for the captain, the good people of New Eden would have let me die too. 
Enough chitter-chatter. Perhaps you should get back to work. What am I paying you for? I'm a banisher, Mr. Miller. Not a rat catcher. Ghosts were human. They're emotional. Full of hopes and fears about the past and the future, too. To find out what ties the ghost to the living and end the haunting, I must know the story. If you want me to finish the job, then the story must be told. The ghost must manifest. I do not like this idea. This idea can shit itself six times by sundown. Come on, break the brooch and let's get it over with. No choice remains. Let it be done. And I'll be done with it! Marty, you're here at last! Step no closer! I... I don't understand. Are you not glad to see me? Now, Punisher! End this! Not now. You need to hear the truth, both of you. That reminds me. Rebecca, you omitted to tell us that Ferdinando was your slave. That you owned him. I loved him. I was a slave. I was not free to leave. What kind of love is that? What are you saying? We loved each other. Love? <laughs> no. I told my master what she wanted to hear. I gulled her with a lie. I thought you were a fool. But no, you believed me because you wanted to. Yet you didn't believe me, did you? Not entirely. That's why you never freed me. I loved you, and you loved me. It was but a piece of paper. A piece of paper and a guarantee. I needed a guarantee. You don't know what love is. You know only fear. You fear had been undesired. Being unnoticed. Being alone. How very human of you, Mistress Hargrave. But hardly an excuse to own a man. The time to give this love story an ending. Rebecca Hardgrave, you are blinded by your emotions. You cannot see the harm you do. How can love be harmful? You imposed your love on someone who could not refuse it. It was just another chain with which to bind him. I only wanted him to be happy. No, you didn't. You wanted him to be yours. You have me. 
no shell, no ties, no purpose. My own master at last. You understood? I misjudged you. Thank you. Take this for your trouble. Saved our sorry asses, sir. Of that, there's no doubt. You've earned us a rare bit of rest, and that comes most welcome. You're right, soldier. You look drop dead weedy. Aye, but I'll not leave my post. What do you take me for? The dead come no longer, but he's still terrified. Can no one take your shift? We're short handed as it is. Besides, I can rest and keep watch at the same time. Old soldier trick. Let's cut to it. I think you're haunted. The good news is that I can help. <laughs> the Banisher thinks I'm haunted, does he? Nah, I ain't important enough to be haunted. I ain't important, and I don't deserve no help. Wasted time helping me anyway. You heard the man. He wants no help. I see no reason to force it on him. For now, at least. As you were, soldier. I'd like to help him. Old soldier and all. All right. Let's start with his billet. Mr. McRae, do you bring any news about my case? What seems to be the trouble? I'm sure this sounds silly, but I am an educated man, sir, and when I say this shop is haunted, I say it in all seriousness. We've had unexplained pilfering, Though that has stopped since the Widow Ingersoll ran away with the cash box. But I hear... Noises. I'm alone here now, you see. After the horrors this fort endured, could one of these monstrosities be hiding away in the store? Right. That's... Uh, a lot. Let me ask a few questions. See if we can sort this out. Of course. Beg pardon. Whose ghost haunts you, do you think? Any enemies? Lost loved ones, perhaps? I'm well liked. I have no enemies here. Not since Bathsheba took the cash box and fled. But I'd hardly call her an enemy. Bathsheba? The eponymous Mrs. Ingersoll, I believe. The Widow Ingersoll, up to split her hair. We've had someone thieving our merchandise. The ghost is the final straw. You mentioned a problem with pilfering. What's that about? Bathsheba noticed it first. Cases would go missing. Oil, sugar of all things, spoons. 
you have a suspect? Any idea where the stolen goods might be? Not a one, sir. Not a one. And if I'm to be honest, I don't care. If they've stolen it, it's because they need it. Apart from the sugar. And apart from the spoons. No one needs that many spoons. Bathsheba said she'd look into it. I was happy to let her. You say the widow took her own cash box and fled. Why would she do that? A moment of madness, sir. Or so I can only surmise. Did you see her go? I did. And not just that, I heard a commotion. As if her quarters were being ransacked. I confronted the thief, but it was she herself. She yelled at me, shoved me aside and fled. I picked myself up and went to follow. But she was gone. I should have a look in her quarters, so... To solve your haunting, I must investigate the store. Bathsheba's lodgings, too. I'd like to do so, with your permission. May I have it? For the store? Of course. For Bathsheba's lodgings? <laughs> well, not for me to say. Do what you have to do, and if she finds out, it won't be from me. From the invisible. Thomas must be a good friend indeed. Nathaniel is desperate to see him. Signed NS. As in Nathaniel. From whom does he expect a payment and why? What a mess. Bathsheba left in a hurry. Anyone home? I'm Red McRae, the Banisher. Show yourself. I think we're alone. Takings are thin indeed. Wouldn't make me want to stay. Who does Duchess Mock think she is? Taking my wares, taking my business, taking my dignity. To hell with her. To hell with Helen Priest. I'll leg it to Boston before I let her take what's mine. Helen threatened to take her business, the widow ran away. Prudent. I can't say I blame her. 
We found all we could. Might be time to go after our thief. Mrs. Ingersoll took a car. Maybe you could follow her tracks? Not a bad idea, Mr. Sather. Not a bad idea at all. Cart tracks. That way. Do you think perhaps the late Mr. Ingersoll may haunt his old store? Back to save his wife, and with it his store? Perhaps. I doubt it. Bathsheba must have had motivation to flee in snow like this. Or desperation. The tracks veer to the right.
get back up. Watch out. Spectre possession. Away with you. Ready and waiting. The missing cart. Abandoned. The wheel is stuck. Empty cash box. The widow Ingersoll's, no doubt. I'm ready to shoot the infested roots after you bruise the heart.
more corrupted ivy waiting to be plucked out. I maim the corrupted heart. You aim at its roots.
novices really have no idea how many miles a banisher runs the silver case. I once met Nero Fox, the infamous banisher who solved all his cases from the comfort of... I should have become his apprentice. Thing is, his apprentice was the one that went into the field for him. 